I'm going to talk today about reading food labels. Reading food labels can be very, very confusing. Actually, until I actually like went into the field of nutrition, I never actually really think I was properly reading a food label or knowing really what the important things were to look at. And food labels can definitely be very, very overwhelming. You know, there's a bunch of ingredients, there's a bunch of nutrients listed, and we're like, what are we really supposed to look at? So I'm really here today to kind of for lack of a better term, dumb it down for us. And so that we can kind of know what are the things that we really should be looking for, you know, and how to read it properly. So what will we answer today? So why is knowing how to read food labels important? Where's the food label on a food item? I'm sure most of you know that, but you know, it's good to cover all the basics. How do we read food labels correctly? What does a serving size mean? And why is it important to know that? How important are calories to overall health? And where can I use the knowledge I learned today? And I think that's always the most important question. So why is knowing how to read food labels important? So to make healthier choices, right? Which this, which is the ultimate goal to, to limit your intake of added sugars and sodium. I would say added sugars is probably the most important for everybody. Sodium is definitely important, especially for those with high blood pressure, but added sugar I think is something that everybody needs to be cognizant of in terms of, you know, how much we're getting per day. And so the FDA until about, I think it was 2016, actually didn't distinguish between sugars and added sugars. And there's a lot of foods, and we'll talk more about this in a few minutes, but there are a lot of foods that actually do have naturally occurring sugars. Fruit, for example, which doesn't have a nutrition label is one of them. Yogurt, right? Even plain yogurt, you'll see their sugar. But now they've added a subtext to the sugars that says added sugars. And that's really what we want to look for because the naturally occurring sugars in yogurt, that's fine. Um, but we want to know how much added sugar is in there. Also to increase your intake of vitamins and minerals, to aid in sustainable weight loss, to promote long-term health, to prevent or manage chronic disease, to compare the nutrition of similar products, right? When we're in, I actually have a whole other lecture on this of you know, going into bodegas, going into corner stores and looking at the difference between, you know, let's say there are, you know, two bags of chips or two bags of, you know, snacks, you know, how can we compare to know which is the better choice? So I think that that's a, you know, a really, really important skill to have and to choose the best price and similar products and to note any major allergens, which of course is super, super important. And the FDA makes that mandatory now in the U.S., which I think is a very important thing so that there's nothing really hidden for those with major allergies. Where can we find the nutrition label on the food products? So here I have a ketchup bottle and you'll see that there's the front and there's the back. So the nutrition label is most often located on the back of the food item. Sometimes you'll find it on the side of the food item, right? Like cereal boxes, a lot of snack boxes. Like if it's like a box shape, you'll find it on the side, but it's, you know, it's typically in, you know, the back or the side. We're never really going to find it in the front, right? That's not something that they're going to just throw at us right then and there. The full list of ingredients is located under the nutrition label also, right? So you see here for the ketchup, for example, you have the nutrition label, and then you have where it's listed ingredients, ingredients is bolded, and then you see all of the different ingredients that are listed there. Like I mentioned, sometimes we find on the side, right? Food, things in cartons, things in boxes. A lot of the times we'll find things on the side. And then when we do find it on the side, we're not going to find the list of ingredients right under. We'll usually find the list of ingredients to the right of that. So I know a lot of this is really, really basic. I just wanted to kind of go start from the beginning and just kind of build our way up to things that get me get a little bit more confusing. How do we read food labels correctly? So the serving size is really going to be the most important thing. So you see where there's this number one over there. So there's the arrow. You may know this, but a lot of people don't realize that when we're reading a nutrition label, we need to know the serving size. It's not talking about the entire box of food or the entire bag of food or, you know, the entire carton of milk. It's talking about a specific serving size. So for example, we're having a cup of, you know, I don't know, let's say it's juice. So we want to say, we can be like, oh, okay, there's 230 calories in this huge box of juice. 
But no, we, it, there's not. There's two thirds of a cup is a serving size. And that's what all of the rest of the, the nutrition facts go for that two thirds cup and not for the entire thing. So we can find serving sizes in all different units of measurement. So it can be in cups, tablespoons, slices, right? In bread, it can say two slices of bread is a serving size. Pieces, right? Let's say we're, we have a big bag of pretzels. It usually will say, you know, 10 pretzels or 10 pieces is a serving size. So it's very, very important that we do that. And, you know, if you're somebody, for example, who has a really hard time with portion control or finds themselves once they open up a big bag to eat it right before you start eating, portion it into a container or a plastic bag or, or anything, you know, that you guys use, that's always the best way to go to make sure that we are following portion sizes correctly. So how many grams of added sugar are one serving of this product? So we're going to go to here. We're going to see, so we have total sugars, right? So we have total sugar. So it's 12 grams of sugars. But then I mentioned to you that, you know, back in 2016, they added this little subtext right under where you see total sugars and it's 10 grams, which means that there's two grams of naturally occurring sugars and 10 grams of added sugars, which is a pretty high amount of added sugar. It's not crazy but it's definitely a high amount. I usually, my rule of thumb, and there's, you're going to meet different, you know, people in the nutrition world with different rules of thumb. My rule of thumb is anything above five grams of added sugar is more than we want. Anything below five grams or below is, is not bad. So, you know, if it's six grams also, you know, not terrible, right? We want to give ourselves a little bit of a leeway, but for just like a regular snack or anything, you know, regular, like let's say a yogurt, right? We can think, oh, yogurts are healthy. So many of them have added sugars. If we're going to see 10 grams of added sugar in a yogurt, that's typically going to be more than we want. If a product contains multiple servings per container, you would multiply the nutrition facts by the amount of servings you want. So there are eight servings in this package, right? So it says what the serving size is. There's eight of those serving sizes. So anything, if you want to see, oh, how much is in this entire package, you're going to multiply that number by eight. You're going to multiply that number by the amount of servings. So here there's eight servings and there's 230 calories in one serving. So we're going to do 230 times eight to find out how many calories are in this entire box of food or this entire, you know, package of food. So total carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are a macronutrient, right? We speak about carbohydrates all the time, right? We speak about simple carbohydrates versus complex carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are a macronutrient. This is where you will find the sugar and fiber content. As we mentioned before, we spoke about the total sugars and we spoke about the added sugar. All of those are subtext under total carbohydrates. That's the umbrella term. So fiber and sugar will fall under those carbohydrates. So we see here that the total carbohydrates are 37 grams of carbohydrates in one serving. So this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated here. One carbohydrate is equal to 15 grams of carbohydrates. So for example, if you have one slice of bread, that's going to be 15 grams of carbohydrates. And I usually like to think of it in terms of slices of bread, because I think that that's the easiest way to kind of really understand it. So we have... 15 grams of carbohydrates. So two carbohydrates would be 30 grams of carbohydrates. So this package is a little bit over two carbohydrates, which, you know, you would look at 37 grams and you'd be like, oh, wow, that seems like a lot. But when you put it in terms of, you know, one equals 15, one, one piece of bread equals 15 grams of carbohydrates and two pieces of bread is 30 grams of carbohydrates, then that extra seven is not actually that crazy. And that's why I think it's important to look at it in terms of, you know, slices of bread or in terms of, you know, one carbohydrate e equals the 15 grams because then it doesn't seem as bad. So this is not terrible, the 37 grams of carbohydrates. You know, dietary fiber, for example, that's also going to be, and I'm not going to talk about net carbohydrates and everything like that because it's super, super confusing and not necessary. But some of those carbohydrates are, for example, fiber, right? There's four grams of fiber in this product, which is a pretty solid amount, really. Anything over two grams of fiber, it's pretty good. Four grams of fiber is definitely going to be a solid amount. And some of that's going to go into the carbohydrates. So even more so that 37 grams is really not that high. 
We want to choose foods with vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Nutrient-dense foods are rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber to support overall health. And also, you know, so many people like to look at this daily value on the right side. I think it's really, really confusing to people. I generally tell people to ignore that. It's just saying, you know, whether or not you're getting a, a solid amount or of these, you know, total fat or whatever, these macro and micronutrients. But I, I'm going to tell you guys to just kind of forget about it. So while calories are not the most important, it's smart to recognize calorie dense foods, right? Because I don't always like to just say, oh, this has 230 calories, so it's not good for us, right? And in, in that one serving, or, you know, this has 100 calories, okay, this is fine for us. But then you kind of look at all of these different sections, and then we see that actually it is okay, or actually, no, it's not okay. We want to eat, for example, like saturated fats. We see here there's total fat, there's eight grams, and there's one gram of saturated fat. So that's, you know, pretty good. And we see there's four grams of fiber. So that's also really good. We see that there's 10 grams of added sugar. So that's not as good. Um, but everything else kind of evens it out. And so you have to kind of make that judgment call yourself, right? It's like, okay, we're getting some fiber from here. There's really not a lot of saturated fat. So it's a little higher in added sugar. You know, I'm willing to take that risk or maybe it's too high in sugar for me. That's a very, very personal decision. But I think it's important to note that those are three very important things to look at, right? It's important to look at the saturated fat because we definitely want to eat that in moderation. Saturated fat, that's actually what is going to, you know, increase our blood serum cholesterol. And it's not actually the cholesterol that's on the food label. It's really the saturated fat that's going to, you know, elevate that blood cholesterol of ours. You know, fiber is obviously going to be important. And as we mentioned, the added sugar, those are the three things I really like to look at. Protein kind of comes next. I think that's important too, depending on, you know, what you're looking for. But those are the three things that I really like to focus on first. That's why I, I put those there first you know, that there are certain things that have naturally occurring sugars, right? So we have dairy products, we have fruit, we have that veg some vegetables, I say some vegetables, because we have, we do have starchy vegetables, and then we have non starchy vegetables. So things like, you know, potatoes, corn, these are going to be like starchy vegetables that do have some naturally occurring sugars. And then we have things like cucumbers and carrots and things like that that are non starchy, and we're not going to get sugar from those. Serving sizes are not always one package of potato chips. We spoke about this or one bottle of orange juice. For foods high in calories and added sugars, these can really add up. It's really important that, you know, I kind of added this again because it is really, really important that we know that. That we say, oh, the, you know, this may not be so bad, but things that, you know, are higher in calories or higher in added sugars or higher in, you know, sodium, let's say, they really, really do add up. So it is very important that, you know, we kind of portion out our food, right? If we really want that salty snack. We really want those pretzels, which by the way, pretzels are a very good snack. You know, it is good to portion those out ahead of time. So front of package labels. So this is the first thing that consumers see when they look at a product. Remember, they want you to buy it. So you see all these things, right? Kids essentials, immunity protection, probiotic, right? They put all these like fancy terms in there that people are like, wow, probiotics, you know, that's all, all the rage now. Everyone wants probiotic immunity protection, right? Our kids get sick all the time. We want something to, you know, to help boost their immune system. It's great. These places have marketing firms that help them create their packaging, which is very smart on their part, but we're going to be smarter and we're going to know that we want to look in the back of it. But let's look at a few other things, right? So Cheerios is actually, before I get to the oatmeal, Cheerios is a really, really good example of this. It used to say that Cheerios, the Cheerios box used to say, will help lower cholesterol. Eating Cheerios equals lowering cholesterol because there's fiber in there. But now what they change is it may aid in help lowering cholesterol. So they've changed that wording because it is important to know that, you know, there's no direct correlation and you can't trick consumers that much into saying, oh, I eat, what do you mean? I eat Cheerios every day. Why do I have high cholesterol, right? Because it says that it lowers my cholesterol. Health claims are regulated by the FDA and are supported by scientific evidence. Health claims suggest that a product may lower, so right, so it may lower the risk of a disease or a health condition, right? So like this oatmeal is also another example. It says heart healthy, same like the Cheerios, it may lower the risk of heart disease or you know, high cholesterol, but it cannot say it will there's a direct correlation there.
you know, so health claims, an example, heart healthy, supports brain health, boosts immunity, things like that. You know, statements, a lot of the times they can be very vague and misleading. So it's important to know that. Examples of nutrient content claims, right? High fiber, reduced sodium, low fat, a good source of, you know, calcium, you'll see a lot of the times, things like that. So these things are regulated by the FDA. So we mentioned the structure function claims are not regulated by the FDA. Now it says can help lower cholesterol, but it used to say that it did lower cholesterol. So here also, I'll just go through this structure function claim. Examples of helps promote digestion, supports weight loss, helps lower cholesterol, supports strong bones. You know, there's calcium in there. So that's why they're saying that about the strong bones. Helps lower cholesterol. It doesn't help lower cholesterol. It can help lower cholesterol, but it's not definitely guaranteed to lower cholesterol. Supports weight loss, maybe because it's lower in, you know, calories or lower in certain, you know, fats and helps promote digestion. Maybe there's some, you know, probiotics in there or whatever it is. But that's why it's really important that we know how to read. The reason that I put all this in here is because it's important for us to know that they put a lot of these, you know, claims on these boxes or on these food packages, but it is important for us to know how to actually read the food label. And that's kind of why I put all of this there. And to also know that when we do go into a store, we go to, to a supermarket, we know that the packaging and all of these claims that they put on there are a lot of the time for marketing purposes. And we need to really know the facts and we need to know how to read the food label so that we do know how to know the facts. So how important are calories to overall health? So knowing calorie intake can be very, very helpful for weight management. I would say that's the number one thing. We want to know how many calories we're getting a day. We do not want to count every single calorie. That's called calorie counting. That's a very, very old school method of nutrition. It is not used in the modern day nutrition. The only time we do calorie counting is in a hospital setting specifically for patients with eating disorders. They need to know calorie counting for those reasons to make sure that they're actually getting enough calories. But we don't want everybody just sitting there and being like, well, I had, you know, this has this many calories. Let me, you know, write this down. We don't want to do that anymore. It's first of all, mentally, it's exhausting and it's not good for us. And it's just a uh, not good way of practice, but we generally want to know how many calories a day we're eating. It's important for sports nutrition. It's important, right, for people who are very, very active. They should know how many, you know, calories they're eating and what the breakdown of those calories are. So the breakdown of the macronutrients, right? People who are very heavily into working out in sports tend to need higher protein needs. They also need, you know, higher carbohydrates because they need carbohydrates is what fuels us. That's what gives us our energy. So if anybody's ever run a marathon or knows anyone that's run a marathon, they do something called carb loading the day before. And that's because they need a ton of carbohydrates to fuel them to get through that rate. Fertility, pregnancy, and breastfeeding, it's important that we have enough calories. Sometimes women who are trying to conceive you know, may have difficulty because they're not getting enough calories. So it is important to make sure that we are getting enough. And again, the breakdown of those macronutrients and those calories are going to be super important. And obviously growth and development. We want to make sure we're having enough calories and that's, you know, for kids. How important are calories to our overall health? So it's important to know, and I know you guys probably know this, that not all calories are created equal, right? So we have a hundred calories. So we have, we have 100 calories, let's say, in an apple and 100 calories in jelly beans. And someone can say, well, it's 100 calories, so what's the difference? But they're not created equal, and I'm sure a lot of you know why. But why? So the apple contains fiber, it contains other vitamins and minerals and other nutrients, whereas jelly beans are pretty much all added sugar. There's zero nutrients in there that are helpful to us. So it's important to note that. It's important to note when you're looking at you know, there was two potato chips, let's say there's two bags of potato chips you're having. Oh, well, they're both, you know, one's 230 calories and one's 225 calories. But now let's look at the next section, right? What, you know, how much fiber, is there any fiber in there? Oh, there's no fiber. Okay, fine. How much protein there? Oh, one is three grams and one has zero grams of protein. Okay. Three grams of protein is pretty good. Uh, you know, let's take that. Then let's look at the carbohydrates. One has, you know, 75 grams of carbohydrates and one has 37 grams of carbohydrates. Oh, you know what? This one has protein and has 37 grams of carbohydrates. This is the better option. So it's important to really know that it's not just about the calories. It's also about those other nutrients as well.
you know, I want to go through the different meals and snacks of like, you know, let's say lower sugar, lower sodium options. So lower sugar options. And these are really, you know, good for people also who are really focusing on their carbohydrate intake and their sugar intake as well, right? If somebody has diabetes or just generally looking out for that, which everyone really should, our breakfast should be pretty low in sugar. You know, so fresh fruit, obviously those the naturally occurring sugars, nuts and seeds, plain regular yogurt or Greek yogurt, some protein bars. With protein bars, I really like to make sure that there's less than five grams of added sugar. So if you are depending on a protein bar for breakfast, that's usually my rule of thumb for that. Same thing with cereal. We want to get five grams or less of added sugar. And some flavored yogurts are okay as well. I definitely would love to make sure that, you know, in a, in a flavored yogurt, like seven grams or less of added sugar is okay. Some people really, really don't like plain yogurt. Instead of going to flavored yogurts, I would recommend to flavor it yourself right? Add a little bit of honey or granola or, you know, some, a, a lower sugar cereal to kind of add some of that sweetness or fruit or make your own fruit compote or something like that. That's probably the better way to sweeten yogurts. But if some people just like don't have the time and they're kind of on the go, uh, definitely check to see that there's seven grams or less of added sugar. So here's a plain yogurt versus a vanilla yogurt. So in the plain yogurt, there's no added sugar. In the flavored, there's 17 grams of added sugar. So that's a lot. Six grams of natural sugar per 200 grams, 22 grams of sugar per 170 grams, right? So a lot of total sugar. Both sources of probiotics and both complete sources of protein, right? So you would say, oh, they're both protein. They both have probiotics, right? But now let's look at that sugar and you see that there's a huge difference. Definitely an important thing to note. So lower sugar options for drink. So water, seltzer, black coffee, even if you're going to add a little bit of milk, that's fine too, or unsweetened teas. Uh, some flavored waters, a lot of them will say like vitamin water, for example, there's on the bottom, there's sugar in there, but if you're like, oh, vitamin water, that's healthy. There's a lot of sugar in there. So definitely look. And some natural juices as well. Again, there is going to be sugar in juices because there's naturally occurring sugar in fruit. And people always ask me the question, is drinking juice okay? Is that like eating a fruit? And the answer is no, because when you're eating the fruit, not all calories are created equal. So same thing with sugar, right? When you're eating an orange, you're getting the pulp, you're getting the, uh, you know, some of the pith, you're getting some of those things that have, you're getting tons of fiber. And when you're juicing that, when you're juicing your fruit, you're breaking it down just to the juice and you're getting rid of all of that good stuff. You're really just getting the sugar out of that. So yes, once in a while, that's fine. But don't think every day if you're making yourself a juice and it's fresh, you know, it's the same thing like eating the fruit because it's not the same thing and you're mostly just getting sugar. These pre-made coffees are, not only are they more expensive, they're higher in calories. They have so much added sugar, right? These vanilla frappuccinos or these the things they have in Dunkin' Donuts, they are so delicious. And we're like, oh, it's just coffee, but it is really very, very high in sugar. And it's a lot, a lot of people don't even realize that and they don't even look. So it is important to look. So lower sugar options for snacks. So fruits with nuts with nut or seed butter. I'm always a really big fan of that. Even for my own kids, we always, you know, thank God no, no one has any like nut or seed allergies, but I'm a really big fan of, you know, apples with peanut butter, banana with peanut butter for snacks, you know, celery with peanut butter. You can do obviously any of this with sunflower seed butter. If you are, do have a peanut or tree nut allergy, veggies with dip, hummus is a really, really great thing. There's protein, you know, no sugar, really good nutrients in there. And it stays in the fridge for a long time and it goes great. It's a, you know, a great spread, like if we're making a sandwich, but it's also really, really good with vegetables as a snack. Most popcorn's okay. We do want to check, right? We don't want like the, the kettle corn that has the sugar. We want it to be, you know, a no sugar added popcorn. Popcorn actually a serving size is three cups of popcorn. So we can have a lot of popcorn. Obviously, movie theater popcorn with all the butter is not going to be the same. So I don't want anyone to think going to the movies, we can, you know, that's the same thing because all that butter is definitely bringing in a lot of calories. But if we're going to buy, you know, like a Smart Pop or like a lot of other bags of popcorn, it's pretty low in calories. Most pretzels are going to be okay. And some baked potato chips also. 
So again, I say most some, we want to look at those food labels before buying it and not saying, oh, well, Ariel said it's okay. Let me get, you know, popcorn and then it's like filled with butter and, you know, all this stuff. It's definitely important to look. Even if there's butter, yes, it's going to be lower in sugar, but there's going to be a lot of saturated fat in there from the butter. You know, there are popcorns though that are, you know, really considered to be healthier options, good snacks. I tell a lot of people that that's a great snack, like a after dinner, before bed snack, if that's something that you can handle and tolerate. So definitely, you know, we want to look at those nutrition facts though when we're buying popcorn. So, you know, like let's look at applesauce, even a mass applesauce, right? With no added sugar versus a fruit roll up. So, you know, mass applesauce, there's no added sugars. It contains fiber and micronutrients and a fruit roll up basically has added sugar and, you know, from corn syrup, which is really something that we want to stay away for. There's no fiber and there's no micronutrients. So you're really getting nothing. I mean, people love fruit roll-ups, you know, again, once in a while, they're pretty low in calories. So it's, you know, you'd look at it and be like, oh, it's not so bad, but you're really just getting nothing from it. And there's are just things that are better options out there. So, you know, applesauce, I always say is a really great option. Making your own applesauce is also super, super easy. You know, again, we can keep it in the fridge for a few days. It stays in the freezer really nicely. You know, you can keep some of the apple peel in there and really keep a lot of the good stuff in there. And we, you know, have control, even if you are going to add a little bit of sugar, we have control over that. So a really good option. So how can I use the knowledge I learned today? So checking food labels while grocery shopping or grabbing a snack at the corner store, right? And I think I mentioned both of these. Listen, sometimes we have to run in and out and that's fine. But if we do have the time and we're buying a ton of new products, we do want to check out those nutrition labels. We want to compare. We want to make sure we're getting the best and healthiest options for ourselves and for our families. Limiting purchases of food items, high in added sugar. Uh, I would say that's probably going to be the most important thing is now we know there's those added sugar nutrition labels and we really want to try to avoid that. Comparing nutritionally similar food products for the best price. Paying attention to serving sizes moving forward. And that's like really one of the one things I wanted you to get out of this today, because I don't want you to look at a thing and say, oh, okay, this whole thing is only this many calories. Make sure that we're reading the serving sizes properly. How do you make informed decisions when it's hard to trust the food industry sometimes, right? So like what you were saying about the claims on the front of the package as opposed to the nutrition facts on the back. How do you juggle those two things? And I see it with my kids, like I'll go into a store and they don't know how to read yet, but they're just like so excited by the front of packaging. And I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, well, you know, this doesn't look so bad. And then you kind of look, I think really the best thing that we can do is read the nutrition label, read the ingredients, right? Also something I didn't speak about in today's lesson is that, you know, when we do read the ingredient list, the things that are at the, the top of the list are the things that there's the most of in there. So if sugar is like number one or number two, there's going to be a lot of sugar in there. And I think that that's like an important lesson to know also. You know, these claims, they're out there for, you know, they know what people want to hear. They know people want, you know, immune boosting, probiotics. Like they know people want that. It is important to look, I think the nutrition label is probably the most important thing to look at rather than those claims because, you know, some of them, as we mentioned, are regulated by the FDA and then the, the structure function ones that we mentioned are not. And so people can just write these things and we would have no idea that, you know, well, why are they saying this? And then it's like, you go to the back and you're like, oh, okay, well, there's one gram of fiber. And so they're saying that one gram of fiber maybe is lowering my cholesterol, but is one gram of fiber really enough to do that? And then you can sort of make that call for yourself. It's almost exactly. like- it's almost like the food label is something like going to, uh, you know, getting information directly from like a USDA site, as opposed exactly. to somebody saying like, you know, just like in a chat or something like this will make you lose weight, you know, or a commercial. Exactly. Actually, you know? So making, yeah. So losing weight, those claims you used to find a lot more yeah. on food packaging. And I think that there's Obviously, there's still focus on weight loss, but it's not as much as it was. I think a lot more people are into like their gut microbiome yeah. now and, you know, immunity and things like that and heart health, which is great. So the claims kind of have shifted from weight loss to, mm -hmm. to those claims. So I think it's important and it's much easier to check, you know, a food label for all of that. So definitely a good thing to do is to know how to read a food label.